The Batman was directed by Matt Reeves and stars Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Andy Serkis, Jeffrey Wright, Colin Farrell, Paul Dano, a lot of great talented cast members. And in this one we follow a much younger version of Batman, played by Pattinson, who has to solve a series of murders which are being conducted by the Riddler, played by Dano, and he's leaving a lot of riddles and clues behind the scenes and hopefully he can solve them and stop whatever is coming next. This is a movie that I can't really go into because spoilers abound, so I'm gonna try and keep that to a minimum let me just tell you the basic stuff about the film how i felt about it it's been a while though since we had a batman solo movie hasn't it the last one was the dark knight rises in 2012 it's been 10 years since we had that and now we're getting matt reeves's iteration yes we had the ben affleck batman movies in the dceu but batman v superman is more like a crossover event and then you get justice league but the hype for matt reeves's vision has been undeniable ever since the first teaser came out in 2020 as part of dc fandom a lot of people have been excited to see what he would bring to the table and reeves is a director who has yet to disappoint me every single thing that he's made has been pretty much perfect. I thought his Apes movies were incredible, in fact, his most recent ones, and War, I think, is a straight-up masterpiece. The Batman is a film that I feel like is Reeves just firing on all cylinders. I'm not gonna beat around the bush anymore. This is a masterclass of a Batman movie. This is easily my favorite outing of The Dark Knight since The Dark Knight. Uh, that was 14 years ago. And I think a lot of that has to do with Reeves' understanding of the character and taking him to a place which I don't think a lot of live action movies, in fact, I arguably none of them have really focused in on, which is his detective side. A lot of times when I watch the movies that came before, whether it be the Tim Burton movies or the Joel Schumacher films or the Christopher Nolan trilogy, I haven't noticed a lot of that time devoted to how Batman solves cases. Like, it will often go towards more of the action-heavy beats rather than try to make it like a case file and like how he's acting like his own police officer of sorts. In this movie, a lot of that time is spent into cracking the case. And so you spend a lot of time with Batman as he's going around crime scenes and deciphering stuff. And I loved that. That's about two hours and 56 minutes worth of detective crime noir filmmaking and it never feels like two hours and 56 minutes. The best compliment I can give the Batman is that it could have gone on for three more hours and I wouldn't have minded. I really could have been lost in this vision of Gotham that Reeves has created. And my God, what a beautiful vision it is. Greg Fraser's cinematography, who is just coming off Dune, which he's probably gonna get an Oscar for, is magnificent. This is a stunning film. Some gorgeous shots over here that are gonna be etched into my brain for a long time. Some beautifully shot, action sequences since we're going at it and a great understanding of what Gotham really is. To explain what I mean let's go back to Batman Begins for a second in 2005. When that came out something that I feel is often overlooked by some people was how it captured Gotham. The gothic nature of it as well as the modernity of what was coming up at the time and how that film characterized it was really really great. Eventually as the films progressed you became a lot more urban and by the time Rises came out it was basically just New York City. However with the Batman this movie it captures a lot of those elements again. It feels like a city which is very much on its last tether ends of any kind of civility. It has gone to absolute shambles, crime has overrun it, and the way it represents that and the aesthetic look of Gotham, it feels like its own character. I feel like that hasn't been accomplished since Begins, and Reeves does it in a really great way. That feels very comic booky as a result of it. And that is also helped with the moody setting of it. It's a very dark, grim movie which feels like a detective crime noir film. It has that side of tone throughout. Let's talk about the performances. Let's discuss the elephant in the room. Robert Pattinson. Never again do I want to hear critiques of this guy as an actor because up until now, the indie movies that he's been doing, they could have been examples enough. I have been telling you guys, go watch Good Time, The Lighthouse. If mainstream audiences didn't want to catch on to that, maybe this is the one that'll do it because... This is a phenomenal performance. I never want to hear any critique again. Like, especially not with like, oh, he was in Twilight. Like, whatever. Fine. That time has passed. 
Let's let's go to this now. Zoe Kravitz is also incredible in this movie as Catwoman and Selena Kyle, of course. I don't know if this is my favorite Catwoman performance. I think it's like neck and neck with Michelle Pfeiffer, but she is really, really damn good. I also have to give a big shout out to Jeffrey Wright as Gordon. I've loved Gordon in these movies. Unlike all of the times Gordon has been a character in a film, I've always really liked his portrayals. I think Gary Oldman is a really great Gordon in those uh, Dark Knight movies. But I think Jeffrey Wright here brings another flair to it, and I really like what you did. Also, Colin Farrell, who is unrecognizable as the Penguin, is astonishingly great. And, oh my god, the makeup work on him is Oscar-worthy. Like, it's, it's remarkable what they've done. The prosthetics are simply spectacular. Let's talk about Paul Dano as the Riddler. Oftentimes when you get to a Batman movie, you have to look at the villain, because his villains are often incredibly iconic. And they have led to some of the greatest iterations and their performances over the years. You know, we, we talk to this day about Heath Ledger as the Joker. I think Paul Dano as Riddler is demented, he's menacing, and very, very memorable. He is damn good in this film, and he's extremely terrifying. Every time he shows up on screen, it's a very uneasy presence. You see this guy and you want to run the other way. And they did that so, so well. And it's just a testament to, again, how Reeves understands these characters. Because Batman is one thing, but something that, like, going off of the legacy of Batman, Batman is defined by his villains, his enemies. Because eventually, as he encounters each one of them one by one, something about him is added on as a character. Something changes in him. And I think this is... The perfect example of that. How this is affecting Bruce's psyche as everything is happening. As is the case, you always got to look at an Alfred who is great for any kind of Batman to go with Bruce Wayne. And Andy Serkis is very much part of the job. He is very good in this movie as well. I really can't wait to see more of him hopefully in the future. He does a really great job. And, and you add him to the list of growing Alfreds who continue to get better and better. Let's talk about another aspect of the movie I was excited for, which is the score. For other it be Danny Elfman or Elliot Goldenthal, Hans Zimmer, James Newton Howard. Whenever a composer has come in with Batman music, it's always been something really special. And there's always something new to bring to the table. I think with the Batman, Giacchino has provided one of his best scores maybe ever. This is a spectacular piece of music. And his Batman theme is something that is really great. It's both heroic and also bittersweet and tragic and somber at the same time. There are these various layers to it that are evoking both Batman as well as his alter ego, Bruce Wayne. And I loved it. I think it added so much to the film and it plays a lot. So that was really great to hear. And in a lot of variations as well. It uses them in, in a very interesting way, those particular beats, as well as the themes for Catwoman and Riddler are very well realized. I mean, I'm trying to think about any major issues with this film. I really can't. Again, the best praise I could give it, I gave it very early on in this review. This could have gone on for three more hours. It's already three hours long. But I wouldn't have minded. I could have been in that theater. As soon as it was over, I wanted to go back. I wanted to watch it again. And it's been a while since I felt that way about any movie with Batman in it. Granted, The Dark Knight Rises is a movie that I really, really, I, I love it. And I have defended that movie for a long time. But again, like I said, this is, this is the best one I've seen since The Dark Knight. I just, the amount of care that has been taken into bringing this character to life, against all odds, by the way, they filmed this in a very precarious time in human civilization. The t fact that they managed to pull it off as well as they did, it's a testament to the filmmaking. It's a testament to how much they were committed to this thing. And the fact that against all odds, they made a film that is going to go down as one of the greatest comic book movies of all time. I mean, there is no exaggeration over here. This is a perfect Batman movie. And I'm so glad that people are going to witness it. And if you do, you see it in theaters. I mean, you see it on like the biggest screen imaginable. It is an absolute treat to watch. I'm going to give the Batman a 10 out of 10. I kind of want to go for it immediately again. 
Like, I, I mean, I have not felt the need to go for a film as much again for a while now. Like, I, I want to go see this as soon as possible. And I'm going to go see it again as soon as possible. This is... This is a special, really, really special film. Take a bow, Matt Reeves. I mean, what a beautiful job you've done. And I can't talk more about it because spoilers, but I'm going to. There's going to be a spoiler review. Look forward to that very, very soon. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Have you seen The Batman yet? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the movies.